Hello, my friends. My name is Irvin, also known as Kobo Man. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today's video is about tech support, but mainly and specifically about Dameware. You may have heard of Dameware as a remote desktop software that's used in tech support. And the main difference between Dameware is that you can have a lot more control over client's computer or user's computer that needs help when it comes to resolving any of the computer issues that they may have. So what's the main difference between that and just regular remote desktop uh, that is used with Windows? Here is regular remote desktop that is used with Windows. And yeah, yeah, I can take control of a remote computer with remote desktop, but I can't take control over remote desktops while user is logged in. So go ahead and try this at your own. Uh, see if you can do it, but I guarantee you can't. So if you just use regular remote desktop within Windows and try to log into somebody else's computer while they are logged in, you won't be able to do it. It will kick them out because uh, they will get a message asking, do you want to allow this person to take control of your computer? And if they say yes, it's going to kick them out and it's going to log you in under your own local profile, which doesn't really help much unless you're trying to fix specific, uh, you know, software issues. But you know, even then, you're wasting a lot of time, you're kicking out the users, uh, you won't be able to recreate a lot of issues that are specific to that user, especially if it's specific to their local profile. All right, so that being said, with software like Dameware in this situation, we can take control of their computer uh, while they're using it. So all they do is just get a pop-up and, and ask them, do you want to accept incoming connection from uh, this person it will tell them who it is that is trying to take control over their computer they click yes and then boom you take control of it okay now that i've briefly explained what dameware does uh, let's have a look to what it how it looks like actually <laughs> i mean let's have a look so here's what happens whenever you open up dameware mini remote control there are two components of it uh, there is one main software that's installed on your computer and there is the client side of it and i will show you how that's also deployed so you can understand how this is actually working this is what happens when you open it initially and you know you get the typical uh, pop-up window that basically asks you the host name meaning the computer the remote computer of the user so you would ask the user what's your computer name or their ip address and you would type it in here and then uh, for the authentication uh, you would specify what kind of authentication you are using chances are in a business environment you're using basically uh, windows type of login uh, whether it's domain based or just you know regular um, local login uh, this you would keep at windows nt challenge response windows nt being the old school windows nt it's kind of reference to that but it's the type of uh, login or that that you're that you're given is, is the as any option so you're basically using windows login but you can also use a domain login which in a business environment you would use that so if you are using a domain login for this you would leave it windows nt challenge and you can simply just select use current login credentials and that's perfectly fine all it is is just going to replicate your domain login so if you're already using your domain login for this main computer it's just going to use those same credentials you don't have to type them in or anything and then you're just going to connect to that user will get a pop-up asking do you want to accept they click accept and boom you're taking control of their computer so just to mention this real quickly, you can actually initiate a chat session with the user before you take control of their computer. So instead of selecting connect, you can click on the chat box and that they will get the same type of notification asking them if they want to accept. And here's what it kind of looks like when it comes to conversation you might have with the user when connecting uh, to their computer. However, if you have it set up where there is no, <clears throat> excuse me, when there is no uh, domain login, you can simply specify the login that is available on the remote computer. And for those purposes, this is what I'm going to use here uh, so that we can connect. So again, this, this is, I'm not using the main credentials in this case. I'm using a local login that's available on the remote computer. So it would let me take control. So that way I can show you uh, how this is connected. And then, of course, you got some basic, uh, you know, stuff that you can, uh, basic options that you can here uh, modify. You can also switch it to use a remote desktop. But then 
you know it enables some of the features of that but then why it's it's just i wouldn't you know this is just use use mrc viewer uh, which is uh, installed on a remote uh, machine as part of the client software and i will show you how that looks like so again there are two parts of this this is the one you are using as tech support and then once you type in all your credentials and type in the host name or the ip address you simply click connect and it's going to initialize it now remember we are using rdp on the other side here it is here is the rdp and there is no pop-up because i'm currently using the same login so remember if somebody else was logged in on this remote desktop that we're trying to connect to they would get a pop-up asking us but since we use the credentials kobo man here these are the exact same credentials that i'm using here for the rdp so it's not going to ask me so right now it just shows up as it's locked i'm going to type in my password but if i wasn't in there with remote desktop already it would just log in which i will show you and now you can see that it disconnected the regular remote desktop here that's gone and it kicked me out of that so then i took over using the dameware okay so i'm going to disconnect now and now we are disconnected we're now no longer using remote desktop so now when i click connect which is this button here i'm going to click connect we get the same pop-up i'm going to try to connect again and now it's just going to go straight through without even asking me for a password or nothing like that so yeah this is great you just have full control of it uh, while you're here um, you can see your remote cursor you can do all kinds of different things you can lock remote keyboard and mouse so if a user is not understanding what's going on when you're taking control they might try to fight you for your mouse or a keyboard you can click to lock them this is a really great feature that i really like when it comes to daymore so you will lock them out and there's you know you can just do your uh, finish then you can unlock it if you want to you know i don't know if you're contacting them via im instant messenger and you want to you know, you want to give them ability to respond, so you want to unlock them. But yeah, I like that there is a feature here that you can lock their mouse and keyboard as well. Dameware, you can actually set it up so that you can even go as far as into BIOS of a remote computer. That's also, uh, that, that can also be set up as well. Okay, now I'll show you how the remote... Uh, client version of that works but first let me sh let me tell you what happens and how you configure dameware so it works with another computer right now just because i have dameware installed on my computer i can't just connect to any other computer unless the other computer has the client software part of it on the other side and i will show you that but i'm going to keep this open like this so you can see this window and i'm going to use rdp just so i can show you the client side of it before we connect to it again so uh the client side of it is going to be on the bottom here and then it's going to show here it is it's the uh the, this is the client side of it and this is what runs in the background and it runs with services upon windows uh boot up so if, if your computer is uh, it's, it's just, whenever you reboot or restart it's going to automatically start basically is what i'm saying so if we go to if you right click it we can look at the settings of it and it's just going to give you an idea what it is uh, but and we know which port it uses to connect and different type of settings but i don't want to go into the advanced part of it i just want to show you how and where where it is it so it's running in the background but you have to basically deploy a version of it that will work on that remote computer okay so we know it's installed but let's see how we actually deploy it um, this is done with a tool that comes with the software itself with a license of Dameware. And uh, I will show you. Here it is. So it's called Mini Remote uh, a Control Client Agent MSI Builder. MSI build, meaning that it builds a an MSI package. So in order for you to connect to a remote computer, you have to create a piece of software that will... Uh, be installed on the remote computer and run in the background just like i showed you here okay it's running in the background and again let me show you here uh, here it is it's running in the background as a service okay now if we go through these uh, settings here it's going to build a package and um, matter of fact 
let me show you so all you have to do is just fill it out give it a name uh, give, tell it uh, the target OS uh, so you can say it's 64 bit or 32 bit so it works for both of those uh, and then you can say install the mirror driver which is because which is something you want as part of the package basically to allow you to see everything and all the modules keyboard driver and you can also install the smart card driver and then you can then specify the output folder and then you just click build MSI and it's going to take just a little bit depending how fast your computer is here is the uh, daymare package that it's installed on a remote computer in order to work so all you have to do is just take it to the remote computer and install it so i'm going to copy it over and then you can just execute it and just go through the motions just like this and you install a client version of it so that way you can connect to it of course there's another way i'm going to cancel this because i've already done it there's another way to do this is that whenever you're connecting to a remote computer for the first time you may not have this package to begin with so instead of you manually trying to figure out a way to install this on there um, you can actually push the same package to the remote computer and it should install it automatically which is a great thing about it you, can, it will, you will just basically get a pop-up you know you would click connect so instead of saying initializing desktop right away it would say hey the remote computer is missing this package and then you say and then ask you do you want to install it and then you click yes and it pushes it to it and then and it goes and installs it and it installs it in the background like this the remote computer will probably have to reboot in order to work maybe uh, but uh, there's a, that that's really nice a thing that it's available so if we go to services here uh, we can see that it starts with let me see here Daimler there it is Daimler remote uh, control uh, we can see that it's running and it automatically starts uh, upon reboot and you can see that it's part it's a component of remote system management suite and uh, this is the ex the, the service name DWMRCS. Uh, okay, one other thing to keep in mind when it comes to Daimware is to make sure and keep track if there are any changes to uh, what you might call it ports port settings. You got to make sure that you're using the port settings. Of course, there is, and when it comes to you know installing this type of on a domain. Uh, in a business environment there might be a connection server that you have to connect to in order to use Daimware. you can't just open it up like i did over here and then just use it uh, there might be uh, some kind of uh, authentication previously to that as well so there are a couple of other ways you can connect to remote computers you can do invite user to join a remote session what happens is that when you click invite user to join a remote session you get a pop-up box i can't do it here because i haven't set it up in such way in a domain environment but you get a pop-up and and it would create a remote session that you're hosting and then you get a website link so this has to be set up on another server uh, i don't have that uh, because i'm not showing you this in a business environment per se but basically is what it is you give a user the link you say type in this link and they go to that link and then you tell them okay click this and click that and even if they have to like install remote session to it's very self-explanatory but basically it's a link that you give to a user and then once they activated it once they click accept then you take control of their computer you can also connect via invitation so somebody sends you an invitation you connect to that session you can also accept incoming connections uh, you know just basically open up a remote uh, and then somebody can just automatically connect to it you can set this up if you're using this pc for example as i don't know some kind of a server or some kind of feature and then here is this install services part of it you can remotely push these services that i've uh, that i told you about uh, remotely as well by initiating it yourself and then you just tell it the computer name and then it's going to install that client thing that i told you about 
uh, onto a remote computer. So it's very simple. You just open this bad boy up, you click connect, type in the name of the computer or IP address you're trying to connect to, click connect, they get a pop-up asking if you want to accept it. They say yes, and then you take over their computer and then you do whatever you want or whatever that needs to be done in order to resolve any of their issues. I hope you like this video. Please take a moment to click like and don't forget to subscribe and more videos coming your way soon. Hopefully not a month later. I've, 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 been, I've been exhausted, guys, so I took a break. But anyways, more videos coming. Thank you. Bye-bye.